preaching out to people, touching the lives of people, one on one. It is not the will of God that any should perish. In Second Peter chapter two, chapter three, rather. Second Peter chapter three. I'm reading verse nine. Second Peter three nine. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards word, not willing, listen to this, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. If that's your heart, you have the heart of God. If that's your mind, then you have the mind of Christ. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, look up here. Uh, an accident has taken place. And this fellow is bleeding. And he's crying for help. And you're standing nearby. And you say, you know what? I'm not willing that he will die. I'm not willing that he should bleed today. I am not willing. I want him to be saved. I don't want him to die in this condition. But you're folding your hand. And you're standing aloof. And you're turning your back on that individual. But I am not willing that he should die. Well, action speaks louder than words. If you are not willing that he should die, you abandon every other sin. You bend down, you bend low, you carry him. You take him to a place where he can be cared for so that he will not die. If we have the mind of Christ and we have the same heart with God and we're not willing, like God is not willing that any should perish, you rise up. You tell other people. Then your office is there. Then your neighborhood there. You'll be telling them because you are not willing. It is your action. It is the evangelism. It is the soul winning. It is the talking to them, touching them, reaching them, and speaking to them that shows that you are really not willing that any of them should perish, but that they shall come unto life eternal. First Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and verse 4. For this is good. And acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Remember, the, I see that there's no full stop there at the end of verse 3. Who will have all men to be saved? Who will have all men to be saved? And if, if that's your mind, you'll do something about it. He wants all men to be saved. Every day you meet more unsaved people than saved people. Every day in your place of work, every day in your market, every day in the bus, every day on the road, every day in your community, you meet, you interact with more unsaved people than saved people, more unchurched people than church people. More people that do not know Christ than the people that know Christ. And if it is your mind, your heart, your desire, your passion to have all men saved, those people you meet, you will talk to them. And it doesn't matter whatever consecration you say you have. It's only a word, empty word. Oh Lord, I've surrendered everything to you. Show it in your action. And show it what you're preaching. And show it what you're soul winning. Oh Lord, I lay everything upon the altar. I belong to you. My time belongs to you. My energy belongs to you. Everything I have belongs to you. That's word. Empty word. You don't have to talk too loud. I don't have to talk too long. Go out and show the people and tell them, God doesn't want you to perish. You can be saved. You can be born again. It's not just what we say when we pray. It is what we do after we are prayed. When you go to the people, you actually show them that Christ does not want them to perish and you don't want them to perish either. Look at that verse 4 again. We will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And that's what the Lord wants us to actually do. He wants us to go out and tell the people. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9. We're reading from verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Woe is unto me 
if I preach not the gospel. It says, when I preach the gospel, you know what has happened? I'm just avoiding the judgment of God. Woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. I want to avoid the judgment of God. I want the blessing of God upon my life. That's why I go out and preach the gospel. And what's the, how do we say that this word is compelling, that it must be done? Oh, because there are a lot of people that need to hear. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. Here are the words of Jesus. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and they were scattered abroad, a sheep having no shepherd. And we know the shepherd, the good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep, that's Jesus Christ. And you have a lot of people having no shepherd, and you know the shepherd already. He is your savior. He is your Lord. And you can easily tell them. And Jesus already said, all the sheep I have who are not of this fold, them I must bring. You are the hand of Jesus to bring all the sheep and bring them into the fold. And there shall be one fold and there shall be one shepherd. And that's why it's a compelling necessity for you and for me to reach out, go out to the people and bring them to know the Lord. And we don't have too much time. We don't have too much time because the time is short. First Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 7, rather. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse, 20, verse 29. First Corinthians 7, verse 29. It says, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. The time is short. As we think about the people all around us, you see them today, oh, they are gone. You see them this week, next week, they are dead. You see them, you interact with them, you trade with them, you sell to them, you buy from them. This year, the next year, they are dead already. The time is short. That's the reason why we need to go to them in time. Verse 29, this I say, brethren, the time is short. He remaineth the both day that have wise beers, though they have none. What he's saying is, don't allow uh, the, the provision of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, the provision of a wife, or the, the, the blessing of children, or the blessing of your success in your place of work. Don't allow the blessing of God to hinder your responsibility, what you need to do for the kingdom of God. In verse 30, and they that we, as though they wept not, don't allow what you are weeping about, what you are crying about, to hinder you from doing what the Lord has called you to do. And you know, as you, as you think about it really, it's like, you know, people are now concentrating on their problems. And many churches, that's what they do. And we have nothing against any church. We bless the Lord for every good thing every good church is doing. But you know, many of the churches, even our own church here, we concentrate on problems. And, you know, our, our members, they want you, if you're a leader, you're a coordinator, you're a group coordinator, you're a pastor, you're an overseer, they want you to just sit down and counsel members of the church. We have a lot of problems in the church. And this one needs uh, counseling, and that one needs prayer, and that one needs attention. Pastor, preacher, or counselor, or coordinator, group coordinator, sit down, sit down. Don't go anywhere, because our church will have problems. They that weep as though they work not. And you know our people, many of our people, all they want now, they go to the prayer warrior, they go to the, they come to the pastor, they come to, you know, anybody that can help them, they're weeping, they're weeping. And the Lord says, they that weep, as though they work not, don't concentrate on your problems. When you concentrate. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, 
if you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.